Right, so here's the first unit of the day. I haven't tested this one, I haven't hooked it up at all, I've just taken the old batteries out and pretty much put it on the shelf. So I've got no idea what this thing's gonna do once we get it hooked up. But I've got some fresh batteries to go, so let's do it. Bam! That's normal. Will it fire? Got a relay. Hmm. That humming noise usually means it's got some bad caps in it, so gotta get the cover off and have a look. So there seems to be something weird going on with this UPS because I can't seem to program the new battery date nor the ID of it nor any of these EEPROM parameters they just stick to their default values so I'm going to try <laughs> the official APC software to do it which might be able to run a firmware update but APC servers aren't exactly the fastest in the world so Despite that, I've got everything else set up. I've got the battery constant reset and uh, the charging voltage calibrated to a more reasonable 27.2 volts. So, while I'm waiting for the fastest server, I'm going to try and run a normal runtime calibration on this thing to see if these batteries live up to their claimed 15 amp hour capacity. So these units usually ship with two 12 amp hour batteries and uh, I've adjusted the battery constant to essentially just a little bit more than uh, the original. I think they, with a 500 watt load it's supposed to run for nine minutes and I uh, adjusted the battery constant to say that it's going to run for 15 minutes so a battery calibration should bring that down just a little but uh, if it runs for more than uh, nine ten minutes then these batteries are probably a bit better than I'd expect because I don't expect these to be better than uh, uh, APC original batteries even though APC don't usually run with very high quality batteries so, let's see what we can do. We should be loading it down. Let's see, 58% load. And it thinks it's going to run for 16 minutes. So, perform a battery runtime calibration. No, I don't care about the battery level going too low. And there we go. Running on battery. Maybe the alarm's on. Why why would it run the alarm while it's doing a calibration? That's pretty stupid. Anyway. Yeah, these <laughs> these batteries get about as low voltage as my 55 amp hour car batteries, which are kind of worn down, worn down, but I'm going to let this thing run now and we'll see. I'm going to time it on my phone as well. Well, colour me surprised. It's gone almost 13 minutes and it's still running. These UPSs usually cut out at about 20 volts, so I'm impressed, really. With the original batteries it's supposed to run for 9 minutes. Or 9.6 or something stupid like that. But these HQ units seem to live up to their claims. Hmm. <laughs> I did not expect that to happen. I was expecting to get slightly less than stock runtime out of this, but Q happy customers, I suppose. And there we go, we're back online. It gave me enough, just a few seconds after I stopped shooting the last clip. And it's charging the batteries up and everything seems to be fine and dandy. Anyway, for fun I wrote down the battery constant that I had programmed into the unit, which was uh, 9A, no sorry, 92. And uh, it works like that, the battery constant goes up when the capacity goes down. 
so it's adjusted itself to 9A. So I was fairly spot on when I set the new battery constant, which I did by just uh, checking out the uh, runtime chart on APC site and putting a constant load on the UPS and uh, adjusting until the UPS considers itself to run for the correct amount of time. The battery calibration just takes care of that little final fine adjustment which is going to be individual for each set of batteries and each UPS pretty much. Either way, if I can get the proper values for the for the battery replacement date and perhaps program a U UPS uh, name into this thing that's not UPS underscore IDEN uh, this thing is good to go even if I don't manage to program those things it seems to be working well enough to be sold and most people don't really care about where, when the batteries have been changed or what the name of the unit is so it's not really that, that big of a deal broken EP ROM, eh, who cares Okay, time for one of the big boys. I don't think I've tested this one before either, so it's a big mystery what it'll do when we actually give it some power. So let's go. Let's see if I catch this park. No. Oh, that doesn't feel very good at all. No. Oh, well, might be good enough. Is it live? Fan works. A bit groany. Could have bad caps. But otherwise okay. Let's get on to the software side of things on this one. Well, this one's a real gem when it comes to the charging voltage. Almost 27.8 volts. I know for a fact that most APC units ship with CSB batteries. The company which thankfully has a website and looking up the specifications for the standard issue UPS batteries, you're quoted with a maximum voltage of 2.3 volts per cell, which equals to 27.6 volts for a 24 volt pack, and that's on the high side. Mm. Yeah, not quite. Okay, after a lot of faffing about, I finally got the official APC software to run. And by some miracle, it man even managed to auto detect the UPS. Now, I got the same problem with this uh, 1500 VA unit that I couldn't write the EEPROM in it. So, with a bit of luck, I just need to use the official software to do it. So, here we go. Is it going to work? Did it do anything? Hmm. Better check with the serial console. Well, lo and behold, it actually worked. Now, that's both good and bad, because it means that at least the UPS is not broken. But it means I have to deal with power shoot. This steaming piece of corporate Java powered turd that I haven't had to touch for years, but. I guess it's back. Back again, tell a friend. Or not. Yuck. Would you look at that? It worked for the other one as well. This is quite weird because I know that you used to be able to do this. I have no idea why it's decided to stop working through the normal serial commands. Oh well, I can't be bothered to research it, so. How issue it is. At least there's nothing wrong with these two. Alright, this guy should run for about 25 minutes with new batteries. 
I've it set it to I think it's going to run for about 32 so let's go oh god for alarm sound on this one as well well we just stopped calibrating it about 13 minutes which doesn't really bode too well for this unit because it should run for considerably longer. The battery voltage didn't drop as low as it's supposed to, so yeah, I might have to let this thing charge up and uh, just yank the power cord and let it do a manual ish calibration because I don't think it quite understands the size of its batteries properly, even though I did set the battery constant. It just reset it back down, way lower than it was before. So, could be something wrong with the unit, most probably just a calibration issue. Now I know the rest of my proper APC units, the smart UPSs are kind of messy to deal with. So I'm gonna take a look at a few Powerverse uh, slash Eton units now. Starting with uh, this 1.4 kVA unit, I think this is a kind of weird model because if I recall correctly, it runs on a 36 volt system, which I've only seen in this, this model. Yeah, and the batteries came on some kind of sliding rail, which obviously is no more hooked together by some cabling. But this thing should eat three 9 amp hour batteries, so let's try and figure out how this thing is supposed to go together and give it a try. Although I've never been a fan of these units myself because of one reason. This thing. They come with a small loud fan and you're going to find out how it's speed regulated in just a moment. That's the sound of a maybe 2 hertz PWM control on the fan. It just turns the fan on and off and on and off about twice a second. Now that gets very annoying to listen to if it's close enough for you to hear it. Aside from that, these are excellent units. They are not uh, transformer based, they are entirely switch mode. And they've got uh, either two or three stage charging of the batteries, which is a lot more than the equivalent APC units have. So they are technically superior. You know, th this 1.4. KBA unit runs on a 36 volt system instead of the 24 volt system the APC runs on, which is a definite plus. So, yeah, it's a real shame they decided to build the fans like they did because I would love to have one of these down here in the shop, but it's, it's noisy, it's noisy and annoying. Something leads me to believe that these units are designed for use in a loud server room. And just for fun, has the inside of that 1.4 kVA Eton unit, or well, power wire, which runs on 36 volts. And as you can see, it's an entirely different beast than the equivalent APCs. Because 
These things are entirely switch mode all the way through. They just have an AVR transformer. So all the voltage up conversion is done probably with that little thing. Well, it could be doing it in this one as well, but I think that's kind of unlikely seeing where it's hooked up. You'd expect to see it closer to the switching MOSFETs if it were actually the main switching transformer, but I could be wrong and I'm often wrong. So yeah, I really like the inside of these units. They are a lot more modern than APCs, that's for sure. Decent quality caps in them, although yeah, Jamicon could do better. These rarely get bad caps though. I've seen more APCs with bad caps than I've seen power wears. If you exclude those really horrible cheap black ones, which you should never ever get, I think they are called the 50, 5105 or something like that. They are small, tall black units and they are just horrible. I really like how they have the batteries on the side here and the fan cooled section here, so the batteries really don't get very warm at all, much unlike APC where you've got the batteries right underneath the electronics. Yeah, power wear. Gotta give that some thumbs up. Except for that thing. Uh.